1712, an inventor called Johann Bessler created a machine which could be used to pump water, lift heavy weights, grind corn, etc. It was powered by gravity. Today, we would use such a machine to generate electricity. The evidence that his machine was genuine is extremely convincing, but, I know, you can't tap gravity directly to provide continuous energy. Obviously, I'm not talking about water mills and hydroelectricity, etc. And yet, in this particular case, there is so much documented evidence that the machine is genuine that we are forced to call into question our belief that such machines are not possible. Could we be wrong in our assumption that machines such as this conflict with the laws of physics? Emphatically, yes. The following facts about the machine are indisputable. During one test, it ran for a total of 54 days under lock and key and armed guard before it was stopped to save wear. The wheels would begin to spin spontaneously as soon as the brake was released and reached a speed of 50 rpm. Later versions were designed to turn in either direction as requested by the examiners to prove that they weren't driven by clockwork. These two directional wheels needed a slight push to get going but then accelerated within three turns to their full speed. The largest wheel measured 12 feet in diameter and 18 inches in thickness with an estimated weight of at least 300 pounds. The bones upon which it turned were just three quarters of an inch thick and they were left uncovered. The wheels were moved to a second set of bearings during tests to rule out any possibility of a connection through the bearings. Both sets of bearings were uncovered and available for inspection. The wheels were used to drive an Archimedes screw to pump water and also to lift a box of stones weighing 70 pounds. Now, I know we could duplicate the tests and fool the examiners today using modern technology, but in the early 18th century it was impossible. The simple fact is that <clears throat> no one can explain how this machine worked other than by some internal mechanism that drove it, and did so for 54 days. Bessler eventually met his death, falling from another of his inventions, a windmill with horizontal sails, the first in Europe, and the secret of his most important invention died with him. Or did it? There is undeniable proof that Bessler left the secret of his invention encoded in his published writings, and the clues begin with his pseudonym, Orphurius. He used a simple cipher obtained by exchanging the first half of the letters of the alphabet with the second half, and substituted the letters of his name, Bessler, to get Orphurius, or rather Orphias, a technique invented by the Jewish Kabbalists. He then Latinized the word, as was the custom in those days, to get Orphurius. There are dozens of other coded clues in his books which reveal information about his machines, and this can only mean one thing. Bessler undoubtedly sought posthumous acceptance of his claims, and in fact he actually wrote in one book that if he couldn't get acceptance while he lived, then he would have it after he died. Obviously he could only do that if he had already planned to leave the information behind after his death. It is disguised in a number of different ways, and you'll see some of them as this video proceeds. For instance, seven pages of one of his books is filled with a list of 141 Bible references. There are 684 etc. which look rather like X's at the end of some of the 7,000 lines in one book. Some words have had letters omitted and replaced with hand-drawn blanks. There are drawings which seem to contain no information of interest, but it is there for those who have eyes to see. And there are many, many more examples. So, the codes exist, and there's no doubt that they offer real information about the wheel. I know this because I've deciphered some of them. But it's an uphill battle getting anyone to take notice, and yet we have the solution to most of our problems right here. The energy crisis, the credit crunch, jobs, pollution, global warming. All of these could be resolved to a large extent by a successful reconstruction of Bessler's wheel. Surely, if there is the slightest possibility that this machine was real, then we should be spending some of those dollars currently being spent on projects which nobody really wants, nuclear power stations, windmill farms, etc., on Bessler's wheel. Bessler was desperate that his secret wasn't lost. So right from the very beginning he took steps to ensure that the secret would not die with him. I doubt if he ever dreamt it might be almost 300 years before anyone began to decipher the Aphirius Code.